the way we remember history is that it was it was the presidents who signed who signed the Civil Rights Act, or it was you know uh, the one or two you know great figures who made these things happen. But the truth is that everyday people made these things happen. It's always been a small few who've been the ones really taking the majority of the risk and the beatings and risking being killed and arrested and risking their jobs, risking isolation from their family and friends that have been pushing this thing forward, right? And being a liberal and being liberal was not enough. Voting every four years is not enough to make these things happen. As white people, it is our duty to stand up to white supremacy. It is our duty to learn about what that means. It is our duty to, to make that a part of our everyday consciousness. Part of our privilege allows us to not think about these things and not have these conversations and not risk being uncomfortable and not risk our lives and not risk our jobs and not risk our relationships because of it. So it is because of the fact that we can step back from these issues that we need to step into them. If we're not actively getting in the way of these injustices, we're allowing them to continue, right? And we are a complicit in that. We are allowing them to continue and we are benefiting from them. And if you really want to imagine what you would have done during the civil rights era, right? And, and, and if you would have marched consistently and been there and stood by the side of people of color that were fighting for justice, then we need to take those steps now. We need to understand that the tactics that Trump is using and that he will use are expanded versions of the same things that our country's been dealing with since its very inception. I think I was raised in a way that I never wanted to make anyone's feelings hurt, um, but I've also realized that part of dismantling white supremacy is having conversations with people who are going to be defensive in these things and whose feelings are going to be hurt, no matter how nicely I do it. Because more uncomfortable than having these conversations is experiencing white supremacy as a person of color. Right? So at the end of the day, what we're looking at in a difficult conversation is not the same as walking down the street afraid that you're going to be killed by a police officer. And I think we ultimately have to consider and weigh those two things and, and, and really put those things in perspective. Our ability to develop not only as anti-racist but as individual human beings is very much related to how willing we are to step outside of our comfort zone and to risk being vulnerable so that we can build up a new, stronger version of ourselves. I think it's a misnomer that people from the outside often think that, oh, I'm doing this solely for people of color, right? But at the end of the day, my humanity is at stake as a human being, right? If I'm not standing up to injustice, if I'm not risking myself for justice, I can't be the most fully human, most loving version of myself that I want to be. You know, at times I do have trouble even envisioning a world without racism. And sometimes I, I have trouble finding hope, but that more important than finding hope in all those moments is making sure that I am on the right side of the struggle. What's required of me is, is not, to, not to only picture that world, but most importantly to act to create it. Liberation now. History, we're gonna face it now. Rise up for liberation now. It's time to take it down.